So if you're like a power user, then you probably don't get all the hype with Ultrabooks. That is until you hold something like this in your hand and holy shit it's light. I mean, this thing is lighter than your notebook, the one that you write on. And you can barely feel it in your backpack. And if your dog was probably a good sport, you might be able to play fetch with this thing, you know? Of course, all Ultrabooks are not as light as this one. This Acer Swift 5 is as light as they come. But what else does it have besides its feather lightweight? Stick with us to find out. The design on this laptop is like any other Ultrabook out there. It's very slim at 15mm, sleek and has good looks. The soft rounded edges on a full matte texture make it look like any other business notebook. This dark navy blue sort of color looks good too, but this golden hint looks a bit odd though. It also catches fingerprints and smudges easily and is a bit difficult to clean. So yeah, like any other laptop I guess. As I already said, the real difference is when you lift it. Like at 970 grams, this is as light as the 12 inch MacBook. And I've not carried any other laptop as carelessly as this one just because it's super easy to carry. But that might not be a very good thing to do. The lightweight is achieved by a magnesium alloy build, a magnesium lithium on the lid and bottom and magnesium aluminum in the inner chassis. The construction is durable but there is a bit of flimsiness to it. There's a bit of flex on the keyboard area and the lid but the amount is acceptable. Also the display bends easily but nothing worrying though. And also the hinge moves around easily when you shake it but by the looks of it, it can probably handle small drops and impacts. Now this laptop cannot be opened with a single hand as you can probably see but it does bend all the way to 180 degrees and being super compact it can probably come in handy when you're lazing on the couch or something like that. So overall it is super compact and unbelievably lightweight. I mean you have to hold it to believe it. What Ultrabooks make up for in compactness they lose in the choice of ports. However this one has enough ports except for an SD card slot and an Ethernet port. I mean there is enough space in there at the sides but it does not have any. Other than that, you get two USB-A's, one of which supports USB charging. There's also a USB-C, an HDMI and a charging slot beside it on the right. On the left, there's an audio jack and two LED lights to show whether it's on charge or in use. The keyboard overall is okay. The Chiclet keyboard gives good feedback while typing and good tactility. The keyboard travel is not so deep but it's good enough for an ultrabook. Plus, the keys are well spaced out and is comfortable to type on. Its white backlighting is also easy on the eyes, so pretty nice to work with in dark environments as well. The only problem I faced with the keyboard is the layout of the arrow keys and the power button. The power button is on the top right corner and it is easy to mistake it for the delete key. Similarly, the arrow keys are half sized and jumbled up with the home and end keys. And I constantly made the mistake of pressing the end key while navigating and it can be pretty annoying while working on document or even coding. Another problem is that the spacebar is unresponsive at times when pressed on the side. However, that might not be as big of an issue. A fingerprint scanner on the right under the keyboard is also a nice addition. As for the trackpad, it is your regular trackpad with Windows Precision drivers. While most gestures work pretty well, scrolling is sometimes a hassle as it won't register your two finger scrolling at times. Tracking is also not that smooth but the clicks register nicely though. In terms of display, it has a standard 14-inch Full HD IPS display with glossy finish and touchscreen support. The bezels are also thin enough and complements the screen just right. There's a webcam on top, which again is pretty bad by the way. The glossy panel means that you'll get a bit of reflection on the screen. And the touch sensitivity is only okay at best. And that's because sometimes it won't register your touch gestures or navigation. But other aspects of the display are quite good. Colors are sharp and look vivid on the screen. Viewing angles are also great with no noticeable color shifts even at sharp angles. It gives you about 96% of sRGB and some 60% of Adobe RGB, which means that it is not a bad choice for editing but not an ideal machine however. Another disappointing thing about the display would be the low brightness. It can only reach up to a peak brightness of 260 nits and that's too low. Dark scenes in movies might be a bit difficult to grasp as well and while it may not be that much of a problem, working outside or with a lot of artificial lightning around can be troublesome. A low brightness with a reflective surface, you get the point. As for the performance, as far as Ultrabooks go, this one performs good enough. It packs the 1.6 GHz 8th Gen Intel i5-8250U and combined with 8 GB of RAM, that's fast enough. The U-series processor are known for power efficiency and compromise on the performance a little bit but that's to be expected from Ultrabooks anyway. Nonetheless, it will handle most tasks you throw at it. Browsing the internet with over 20 tabs open, check. Photoshop or Lightroom, check. Have like 5 or 6 things running in the background while working, check. Video editing, check too. It only lags a bit if you're editing like large files but that is to be expected. 
This Ultrabook does not have any kind of dedicated graphics though. It has the Intel USD620 graphics with 4GB video memory. And that means you will not be able to play many games on this. Of course, it can handle light gaming like Dota 2 or CSGO on medium settings. Now I did try running GTA 5 on this but it turns out it does not meet the CPU requirements related to some frequency and stuff on this thing. So needless to say, this is not a gaming ultrabook and it isn't meant to be one either. As for the storage, this one has a 256GB NVMe SSD. If the storage is not enough, you have to opt for the i7 version with 512GB storage, which of course is more expensive. The SSD speeds are not very good though. On our test, it only obtained a read speed of 520MB per second and a read speed of 445MB per second. The battery life on this laptop is again just okay. You get a 36Wh battery which is pretty small. Acer claims that it will last you up to 8 hours but you can only get up to 6 hours of battery life with normal office work usage that includes loud rising and such. So what can you make of the Acer Swift 5 laptop? Honestly, I was not a big fan of Ultrabooks until I met this guy. I mean, this is a pretty capable work laptop and very suitable for those who are always running around. If you have like a desktop at home and want to carry a light laptop for slight working, browsing and such, this is one of the best options available out there. What I did not like about this laptop are the keyboard issues which are but a minor inconvenience. The brightness is a bit too low and the location of the speakers underneath uh, make the speakers sound not as good as the stereo speakers should. And the lack of dedicated graphics could be a bummer but seeing as how this is not a gaming laptop, it doesn't disappoint really. Now Ultrabooks mostly cost over $1000 but this one right here you can get it for $900 internationally. And in Nepal its price is some rupees 1 lakh 15,000 and for that I think the price is easily justified. Of course this is not your usual heavy working laptop or a gaming laptop either but what it is is an Ultrabook that does not compromise on performance. Plus you carry it around all day long and not even feed it. Now we'll probably get a 2019 version of this machine soon but until then it's still a good buy. So that was it for our review of the Acer Swift 5, thank you for watching and namaste.